Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Doug. This is the nose of Project Snowball. We've had some transmission issues which led to gumming up the stock 48RE cooler despite flushing it many, many, many times when we would filter the fluid even though it looked great. When we would filter it through our filter paper, we would get fine shavings that were coming from the torque converter when it roasted. Um, that's a longer story and we'll have to you know catch you back up on that one later on so what we've got in front of us here was an attempt to correct that that is a true cool 47391 the the one on the end of it designates it as not coming with a cold weather by bypass um, again that's true cool 47391 the one with the cold weather bypass is a four seven three nine this has 13 plates it's eight and a half by 22 and one and a quarter inches thick um, it does fit in the factory space between the intercooler and the radiator it runs a three eighths inverted flare hex head now that's one of the problems and we're going to start right there the three eighths inverted flare hex does not give you a lot of room to have flow. It's smaller than a quarter of an inch. Matter of fact, let me grab this one right here and we'll go ahead and dive right into this. So there are a couple things on this. We haven't got a, a baseline yet, but we want to show you what we're, we're starting with so that when we give you a baseline, it makes more sense. So that is just a little bit larger than a quarter inch and substantially smaller than a three eighths of an inch. So what our problem is, is these trucks, this factory 48RE cooler runs just about half an inch. It's a little smaller than half an inch ID tubing. It's half an inch OD. Um, this is a 10 AN fitting here. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, so that's a 10 AN fitting there. And we wanted to try to stay as true to that, just like Chrysler did, and, and leave the restrictions, have the only restrictions that we have, let those just be the ones coming in and out of the transmission way back there. They, they seem to have set up the coolers so that they flow pretty well. So our first concern, we debated a long time on which cooler to try first, because we realized that we may have to try multiples. We've deleted the liquid to liquid cooler back there, so we do not have the on the side of the box block liquid to liquid cooler. We're trying to run just an air to air because as you guys have heard, there are tons of stories of those liquid to liquid coolers failing and roasting an entire transmission setup. Project Snowball is all about reliability, so we want, even if it takes us a while to figure it out, we want to figure out a reliable, heavy-duty, air-to-liquid cooling system. So we needed to figure out how to get our fitting size to where we would not have a restriction here. So our first step is we we started looking at this and we pulled out the the micrometer and we started looking at how much room we had to drill out in here. We wanted to use just a 3 8 NPT fitting, which we'll talk about in just a second, and we wanted to run it as close as we could to that 10 AN fitting that I showed you a little bit ago. So we settled on a 18 30 seconds drill bit that is just a little bit larger. It's just a little tiny bit larger than that 10 AN fitting. You can't quite slip it in the inside of there. Um, with that, we were able to, and some of you guys say, holy crap, you just took a new cooler and you drilled through it. And yes, we did. Very carefully, we tried to center it all the way down so that we didn't compromise the integrity of this neck. And we drilled straight down into the coolers and it does work. Um, that cooler that you see right there in front of us, we have cleaned. We have drilled it, and then we have impeccably cleaned out the inside of this. Now, as we're talking about this, when we're talking about drilling it, it's easy to say, well, you idiots, you just put metal flakes in there. No, we didn't. As we were dr drilling these sides, 
we put an air chuck. So we did a quarter inch to a three eighths inch adapter and we put an air chuck in this side and it worked beautifully. We kept constant pressure, air going in here, and all of the chips blew right out here. We never drilled on this without positive air pressure blowing all of the chips out. And we wire brushed the inside and kind of ran a reamer through it to make sure all with positive air pressure that we weren't contaminating this brand new cooler and winding up with the same problem that we had from this 48RE cooler of it having metal flakes in it. So once we drilled this out to the appropriate size, both sides, and got the flow we wanted, then we were able to take these 3 8 to 10 AN fittings and start playing with them. This is where it got fun. So the 3 8 NPT has a taper to it. And these 3 8 fittings here, they this does not because it was set up for the 3 8 inverted flare. So what we had to do was use a 3 8 NPT tap and tap these out. Our tap would bottom out before we got enough of a taper so where we had decent thread engagement. So the trick that we ran into there, guys, is we took a, again, positive air pressure while we're tapping, and we took a drill, and we very carefully, we used, let me take it here, we drilled the center out of one of these so that you, we didn't mess up the threads, and then we used a half-inch drill to drill back to just before this collar ended to keep the integrity of it. And then we were able to tap back to there so we weren't plugging up the tap, cutting you know massive amounts of aluminum. We cut back to right there and we were able to get the thread engagement that you see here. We had all but three threads engaged um, and it seemed to work well. So now we have the flow to the cooler that we want. We have no chips in the cooler, that's important. That was a piece that I wanted to share with you of using that positive air pressure. And we are back to our 10 AN lines. Now we don't know how this is gonna work. This is about three times the size of a stock 48RE cooler in terms of how many BTUs it's putting off. So this guy here, you know, like we said, this guy here is about 13,000 BTUs and that's about 45,000 BTUs. Of course, airflow is one of those major things. So we're playing around with this and we fully understand that we're playing around and we're just going to have to see what works. We've done our homework, we've done the best of our can we can, and now it's just hooking it to the truck and seeing what kind of a baseline we can get, which of course we're gonna share with you guys. So once these new fittings come in, we'll let you know what happened with that. And as a, as a final touch up here, just want to say these two bolts here, um, as an example, we threaded the back with quarter inch. So we threaded this, this, this bar stock back here and we drilled these two tabs out on the cool, the cooler. Um, we wanted to use the widest possible points. This one was already drilled out to a quarter inch, but we drilled these two out to a quarter inch and then tapped the bar stock behind it, um, just to make a nice strong uh, mount for these guys since obviously we can't use the factory stuff. Okay, if you happen to have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments below. We know it's experimental. We know some of you might say, well, why don't you use an electric fan somewhere else? This truck spends a lot of time in the mud and electric fans would not live very long. And that's why we're going through all the hassle. This is a true real life work truck. And I'm sure there are other guys out there that are gonna be doing the same thing where it's not just a street truck. This is, this is going to be worked hard. It's going to live in some pretty rough environments. So we need something that's reliable um, and something that hopefully doesn't crap out and then cause our transmission to burn up like those liquid to liquid coolers can do on the side of the block. Let's see if there's anything else that I need to add in here before we shut her down. I'll just go ahead and, and do add one more little thing on here. We have, these are 10 AN corners. So we used 10 AN 90 to solve our problem of getting around this corner. It fits in almost exactly the identical spot as the factory lines 
um, with not a lot of added bulk to it. And we also got some 10 AN clamps that once we get this all run, we'll use the 10 AN hold down clamps. I'll link to all that stuff in the description below um, to all these fittings, but we use 10 AN clamps to hold the, the lines down once we get everything hooked up. Um, we used four 90s overall. There will be a 90 there, a 90 there, and then two 90s coming off of the transmission with quarter inch to 10 AN um, outlets on the transmission back there. And then we use four straights and then a section of 10 AN braided PTFE line. I think that pretty well covers the baseline for this. We'll give you the results of how this guy works once we get her up and running. All right, you guys, good luck on your projects out there. As always, if you have comments, thoughts, um, go ahead and put them in the comments below. We'll, we'll do our best to help out any way that we can. All right, we'll talk to you later.